At this point, I think it's safe to say that the quality of the episodes for Ninja Steel are getting better, but the show's story is effectively dead. And that is quite a bizarre place for this show to be in. Don't get me wrong, every season of this show has the basic formula of Power Rangers protecting the Earth from monster attacks, but there's almost always something that has held my interest, be it story or character related. For Mega Force, that was Robo Knight's character arc. For Super Mega Force, that was the build-up to the Legend Battle. And for Dino and Supercharge, that was the race between the heroes and the villains to find all ten Energems, which later shifted to destroying the Dark Energem once the Rangers' inner gems were recovered. But for whatever reason, Ninja Steel felt it necessary to end the only major story arc they had in the Gold Ranger plot, which could be good or bad, depending on if the show will build on the new dynamics of these characters. But, based on how the last episode ended, I'm very skeptical they'll go that route. This does lead me to wonder if Ninja Steel can continue to put out good episodes with the lack of an overall narrative, but there's only one way to find out, so let's see if the show can continue its hot streak as we look at episode 13, Ace in the Race. The episode opens with the Rangers getting ready to compete against each other in a relay race for the city's Phanathalon, but Calvin is soon distracted by the arrival of Ace, a gearhead who Calvin idolizes because he rebuilt his entire engine. While that's going on, Cosmo Royale introduces the next monster to take on the Rangers named Shoe Spike, who has the ability to turn people into trophies after they lose to him in a race. Cosmo asks how Shoe Spike plans to get the Rangers to race him, at which point Shoe Spike disguises himself as a human, saying that when the Rangers touch his evil baton, they'll be begging for a race. Back with Calvin, he goes to talk to Ace, who shows the Yellow Ranger his newly built engine, but upon inspection, Calvin finds an oil leak. Ace then offers Calvin the chance to fix the leak himself, which Calvin accepts with so much joy that he pushes Ace's car to the school's nearby workshop by himself. Now, some might say that Calvin allowed himself to be taken advantage of too easily, but I think I know what was going through his mind here. But well, this car could be systematic, hydromatic, ultramatic. <laughs> Why could be Grease Lightning? Calvin's absence does lead to Brody and Lee Vaden accepting the disguised Shoe Spike as a replacement team member, but when they touch the guy's baton, they're put under a spell that makes both brothers super competitive as the race begins. Isn't this fun? Huh? No! Ugh. Come on, come on. Here we go. See ya. Preston, what happened to you? Hey, Brody! I'm feeling a wow, that was both a jerk move and the most convincing Brody's been as a character. Lee Vaden also uses similar tactics in order for his team to win the race, at which point the other rangers ask why the two are acting so weird. Rather than answer, the brothers proceed to call the other rangers losers, which is when Shoe Spike turns everyone who lost the race into trophies, before revealing himself as a monster. Shoe Spike then challenges Brody and Lee Vaden to a three-legged race, saying that if they win, Shoe Spike will turn everyone back to normal, but if they lose, the monster gets their power stars. The remaining rangers accept before morphing into action, meanwhile Calvin is almost finished fixing the oil leak for Ace. As he and Ace top off the oil, the Yellow Ranger accidentally spills oil on Ace, and as the Grease Monkey gets cleaned up, Calvin finds a receipt revealing Ace is a fraud who paid someone to rebuild his engine. After being called out, Ace leaves despite Calvin's objections, resulting in Ace's engine exploding, I think? The whole thing happens off screen, so I'm not sure. Mick then shows up for Calvin to explain how friendship is a two-way street and that he's nothing like Ace, only for Mick to remind Calvin that he abandoned his friends during the relay race. While that's going on, Victor in trophy form ends up in a fish tank thanks to shenanigans, where he starts sweet-talking a ceramic mermaid. I have nothing to add here, this is just where Victor is now, so I guess... Hooray for comedy? Back with Calvin, he tries to call Haley as he heads back to the lake. I'm so sorry. Now that's a stretch! Yeah! Let's kick this monster's butt! Whoa, what in the... A monster? Calvin! <laughs> Yeah, a lot of weird stuff happened while you were gone, man. The trophy teens bring Calvin up to speed on the situation, so the Yellow Ranger joins Brody and Lee Vaden's team against Shoe Spike, making this a four-legged race. As the race starts, the three Rangers have a tough time coordinating with each other thanks to the spell that Brody and Lee Vaden are still under, but after Calvin sees that Shoe Spike is cheating, he takes the lead, resulting in a photo finish where the Rangers are victorious. The rest of the team turns back to normal, so the Rangers morph into action to take on Shoe Spike and some Basher Bots. After the Rangers beat on the Bashers for a bit, Lee Vaden and Brody finish off Shoe Spike, but the 
monster grows giant, so the brothers call on their individual zords to take him on. Chu spikes too fast for them to hit, however, so Calvin comes in to knock the monster back, and the rangers form the fusion megazord to ultimately win the day. After the fight, Calvin apologizes to the others for ditching them earlier, and the episode ends with Victor turning back to normal in the fish tank, resulting in the rangers having a good laugh. This episode is pretty good. Sure, no new season plot is established, and the episode is ultimately filler, but the stuff that's here is entertaining nonetheless. For starters, the cast is finally starting to click, with their interactions coming off more naturally here than in the beginning of the season, and their comic timing is pitch perfect. I especially love the guy playing the human version of Shoe Spike because of how much fun he's clearly having, and I really wish that he got more screen time in the episode. But I guess if we had that, we would have cut into Calvin's subplot, which I have mixed feelings about. On the one hand, his scenes feel entirely detached from the actual plot of the episode, but on the other, it has a moral that actually ties into the episode's theme of teamwork, and is possibly an episode that was majorly reshot, thanks to the casting change that happened before the season aired, so I can give it a pass. I also have to question why Brody and Leave Aiden would allow Calvin to lead their race against Shoe Spike, since they should have been so competitive that they wouldn't be able to cooperate, but that's more of a nitpick, since Calvin could have been able to aim the brothers' competitive nature against Shoe Spike after the monster was caught cheating. Overall, this is a decent entry into the season, with the cast doing enough to make it a fun one watch that I can recommend. While I don't have a whole lot to say about the episode, that's mostly because I no longer have a season narrative to comment on, but hey, if these are the types of episodes we're getting without an overarching story, then I say keep the winning streak going and hopefully the next episode will have a little more meat to it. I'm Nick, aka IronBet1993, and may the power protect you. Please subscribe for reviews of Ninja Steel. Episode Reviews! Also, check out Dino Charge Reviews 2 Episode Reviews Also, there's Ninjago Which has reviews to go Please subscribe